Hello, welcome to class two of advanced data mining with Weka. My name is Albert Bifet. I'm a member of the Weka machine learning group and I work at Telecom Paritech in Paris, France. So in this class, we are going to talk about uh, data stream mining in Weka MOA. Uh, data stream mining is a way of doing uh, real time analytics. So this is going to be very, very important for big data and uh, Internet of Things. So let's start with the first lesson that is going to be incremental classifiers in Weka. So as you know, in Weka, usually what we do is that we store all the data set in memory. And then what we do is that we build our classifier using this data set that is stored in memory. This is what is called the byte setting. In the incremental setting, what we do is that we update the, our classifier one instance by one instance. So uh, there is a huge difference between the two settings. Let's look at the incremental setting with more detail. So the idea is that what we do is that we process uh, an example uh, every time. So only one example, no a data set of examples. We use a limited amount of memory because we don't store all the data set in memory. We work in a limited amount of time. So we need to be very, very fast. And we are ready to predict at any point. So that's the main difference. So in the byte setting, what we do is that we process all the data set and then we are ready to predict at the end of the building the classifier. Uh, Weka has many different incremental methods to know which ones are incremental. We need to look that they should implement the updatable classifier interface. So we can find many different methods as naive base, naive base multinomial, so nearest neighbors, stochastic gradient descent, and also some decision trees as the Hofding tree. As you know, the standard decision tree is not incremental, so it needs to have all the data set in memory. So the Hofding tree is the first, uh, is the state of the art in uh, incremental decision tree learning. So the Hofding tree was proposed by Pedro Domingos and his group around 2000. And the difference with the standard decision trees and in the standard decision tree, what we do is that when we need to decide if we want to split or not, what we do is that we look at the data that we have in memory and then we compute the statistics and then we decide if we split or not. But in the incremental setting, we don't store data set in memory. So then what we need to do if we want to decide if we want to split or not, we need to wait two new instances to arrive. So how many instances do we need to decide if we want to split or not? So this is something that is computed using the Hofding bound. And this is why the Hofding tree has uh, this name. Another interesting thing of the Hofding tree is that it has theoretical guarantees that if, we, if the number of instances that we are using to build the model is large enough, the decision tree is going to be similar to the standard, to a decision tree built using the standard decision tree uh, method. Let's see an example in Weka. So we are going to generate a data set and then we are going to evaluate using a Hofding tree. Let's start generating the data. So we are going to use the random radio base function generator. So this is a generator that generates data by creating for each class a random set of centers. In that case, we're going to use 50 centroids, 10 attributes, two classes. We're going to create 1,000 instances. Let's generate the data. OK, so now we have the data, 1,000 instances. Now let's classify it using the housing tree. So let's choose the classifier, housing tree. We're going to run a tenfold cross-validation. We see this is very fast, and we get an accuracy of 71%. Now let's do it again, but generating 100,000 instances. So we change this parameter. We generate the data. Then we can again, we run again the tenfold cross validation. We see that it takes more time, but still it's really fast. And at the end, what we get is the accuracy goes to 89%. So with 100,000 instances, we get 89%. And with 1,000 instances, we were getting only 71%. So increasing the number of instances that the housing tree uh, processes, that uh, allows us to, to have a much better accuracy. 
So in this lesson, we have seen the two settings of Weka, the byte setting and the incremental setting. So in the byte setting, what we did is that we store all the data set in memory. And in the incremental setting, what we do is that we build the classifier uh, one instance by one instance. And the nice thing of the incremental setting is that we can be much more efficient and then we use less memory and we are much faster. See you in the next lesson.